Welcome, Allen High School Pre-AP Chemistry students to your first experience with a flipped classroom. I really think you're going to enjoy it once we get going and you see how helpful it is in terms of applying the concepts we're going to talk about. Right now, our unit is going to be focusing on numbers and chemistry calculations. Now, a key point that I want to make here is our main focus is on process, not on the final answer. I'm not saying the final answer isn't important, but I would consider the process to be a little bit more important than our final answer, and hence the steps in a process will be weighted more than the final answer. Now, because of this, you are going to be asked to do your calculations using a very specific method and setup. And remember from your syllabus, all work must be shown. Now, as we see this, you'll see I'm, I'm okay if you don't show every little detail of the algebra, but complete setup must be shown in, in order to get complete credit. Because our goal is to work on improving your critical thinking skills. So we're after our critical thinking. So we want to develop some critical thinking tools so that when you move on to other classes, whether it be in advanced science or not, you have some tools to help you approach problem solving. Now, before we do that, we need to introduce a few key concepts. The first concept that we want to talk about is that of units. Units must be included on almost all numbers. There are a few values that we're going to see in chemistry that are unitless, but by and large, most numbers have a unit. And when we're giving partial credit, we will typically give anywhere from a half to a full point for including the units. So man, if you don't know how to do something, the minimum you want to do is put the final units in your answer box because that's a very important quantity. Now, the units I would prefer us to use as much as possible. We're not going to all the time, but the ones I wish we would use more often than not are the international system of units. Now, if we could get our legislators to pass a few laws converting everything to the metric system, your lives and your children's lives would be much easier because we wouldn't have to convert between metric and English. And going from simple metric into what we call the SI after the French, uh, le système international, those units in the metric are very, very uh, simple conversions because the units are based on the metric system. So we're going to do most of our work using that metric system, but we still have to do some conversions between English and metric. So let's focus for just a few moments on the international, the SI units. Now, there are more than five. There are others that may be used in physics, but the five that are going to be common in our chemistry class are the following. We have length, and there are times, especially when, say, we look at something like a wavelength, that we will need this. And the SI unit is the meter, and it's given the symbol lowercase m for meter. For mass, you might want to guess it's the gram, but a gram's pretty small relative to some of the things we use, and it's actually the kilogram. And you have had metric before, but we'll review our metric prefixes. Remember that one kilogram, and we're going to learn them in such a way that the one always goes in front of the prefix, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. And it's the kilogram that's the SI unit. For time, it's the second. We'll see minutes used, but it's the second that is the SI unit. Now this next one, we're gonna talk about very early in the unit. There's a dead guy named Lord Kelvin who came up with a temperature scale that is physically meaningful. 
So I'm going to ask you to hold that thought for just a little while as we move into comparing Celsius and Kelvin. And we're not going to really convert from Fahrenheit too much. We're going to focus on Celsius to Kelvin. Now, as if Kelvin wasn't a little wacky, our amount is a fairly wacky number. And what we're going to use for amount, and we'll introduce this much later, I'm just going to ask you to accept that, our amount is the mole. Now, in a formula, our symbol that we would use in a formula for mole is lowercase n. As a unit, whoa, we get to really shorten this down to MOL. Now, it's not the little furry animal. It's not that little mole that's on your back. We're talking about a number. And it's going to be a number much like a dozen. A dozen always equals 12. A mole always equals a certain value. And so that's going to be our SI unit for amount. Now, these are pure measurements. We also have what we call derived measurements. And the common units we'll use for volume are the liter. Now, a liter is also equal to a decimeter cubed because, right, we have length times width times height. So that's going to give us our cubed. And if you are thinking about IB, that's a unit that they'll use on a fairly regular basis. We tend to stick with the, with the liter, but you will see this every once in a while. It's one to one. Don't have to do any math. Just change out the units. And we will also use one milliliter. Now, right now, I'm not really talking about SI as much as I am the common units that we'll be using. And one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. Centimeter cubed is still used quite a bit, especially for solids. And for some reason, I seem to you know, see it in like the medical field quite a bit. Now, pressure is a force pushing down per unit area. The unit that we're going to use for pressure are kilopascals, dead guy. I prefer kilopascals, but many, many books still use atmospheres. An atmosphere is defined as the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level. And we still see tor hanging on. So those are the three common units we'll use, and we'll talk about conversions amongst those in this unit. The semiconductor industry in the United States still uses the tor or even a millitor, and in, the, in Japan or in Europe, they'll tend to use pascals or kilopascals. Energy, we're going to be using the joule or the kilojoule. Now, other units might be a calorie. We won't be using those very much. And if we do, we will give you the conversion factor. Now, you're maybe used to seeing a food calorie. A food calorie is actually equal to a thousand calories. Or really, a food calorie is equal to one kilocalorie, as scientists would measure energy. And in temperature, you will still see Celsius being used on a regular basis. Okay, so those are the units we'll be dealing with. In the next video, we want to move on to math, but I can't do that without emphasizing the importance of including units. If we're talking about tests, quizzes, labs. If there is a unit associated with a number, you must use it or you will lose points. They're very important. It's, you know, if you've got a job out there, it's important to know whether you get a hundred cents or a hundred dollars at the end of the week. So units are not an unimportant thing and we want you to grab a hold of those. And this is just a cute little Ms. Marusic cartoon about screaming because, oh my gosh, you forgot units, and that's a silly point to be missing. So be really careful on labs when you put down numbers to know whether or not those numbers have units. 
Now, we're going to go on to temperature in the next video. So I'm going to stop right now, rewind if you need to, do what you need to do to make sure you understand what I talked about with units, and we'll move forward in the next video.